Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday. I almost said good morning. It's like noon here. And happy Easter, I guess, yeah. based off of the colors that we're wearing. So we did not coordinate or plan this, but for some no. reason I'm in like pastel purple and Ryan's in pastel green. I love Dolly Parton. Also, Elephant in the Room, I did dye my hair. And I love Courage the Cowardly Dog. I didn't dye my I hair. I have brown hair now. <laughs> it's a little darker on camera than it is in real life because it looks black. Oh, I thought I like dyed It is my pretty, hair. it's a dark brown. I have very dark brown hair. I feel like none of us have seen Ryan with brown hair for a while. No. I, also, he, I get a haircut tomorrow, so I do apologize if she's kind of doing you're her in, own thing. If you're an OG and you've been around here a long time, you not only probably remember Ryan with brown hair, but you might even remember when I have had black hair I many times that. in the past. Well, many you should. <laughs> so, yes, today we don't have Easter information for you guys. Nothing yeah. spring related. We're There's just no in these bunnies. colors. This is actually a very, like, winter heavy, winter sport centric video. Yes, it is. But if I sat in front of these lights in a winter coat, I think I would melt. True. And do we it. know anything about winter sports? No. Not really. Do we live in a state where everybody and their mother does all the winter sports? Yes. Yes. And in our state, many people wear winter sport wear just for day-to-day -day life. Because That's Because you kind of need it when you're for around For those here. of you that are new, we live in Minnesota. Yes. So okay. today's video is a bolo list. Ten bolos as usual. And it's going to be covering puffer coats and kind of ski wear type brands. Yes. So all of these brands are quite centric on, if it's not skiing, it's like snowboarding, mm -hmm. outdoor winter, like exploration, and Going like hiking. Going outside in the snow. And in that realm, there are a lot of very expensive brands. There's a lot of money to be made keeping people warm. Yes, you know? there is. Yes. <laughs> so we do have some quite valuable brands to share with you guys today. Ten <sighs> of them, like I said. But we actually do have eight more that we are going to share with with the Valentine's tomorrow. So if you are a Valentine, as per usual with Bolo videos, we have eight more different from these ones, ski, puffer, winter Bolos for you guys tomorrow. Yes. Then coming up later this week, like I've said multiple times, Thursday is my mom's birthday, Debbie's birthday. So we are having another family bin smash that unfortunately Ryan works during. And then Debbie's going to be doing a haul at the conference. end to celebrate her birthday. Yes, Debbie's birthday is this Thursday. Oh my gosh. Saturday she turns 35. Yeah, she turns 26. She It's her 21st this week. <laughs> Can you all imagine? Saturday's normal. What's what Saturday? And then next week, we're kind of jumping back to the usual where Ryan and I are going to do a bin strip with us together. Yes. And then that... <sighs> Thursday will be a haul, and then the next week after that, we actually have it all planned out for once. We're going to be doing a New Year's style bolo list, yes. where it's all the glitz and glam brands. All the fun things that you use, can like, wear to the party. Glitter and sparkle and metal and... Things that shine. Yeah. Shine like a disco ball. Disco I almost balls. said the other one, but I don't want Miss it Rihanna be, to come after it me. It could be like a disco bolo. That'd be fun. Ooh. Disco bolo. That actually sounds fun. Okay, anyways, that's not what we're here for today. What do not you know? at all. Side tangents we're already at three and a half minutes what did you expect on this channel so let's jump in <laughs> nothing except tangents. let's jump into the bolo list and as usual i'll be putting pictures of not only the label right here but then i'll be flipping through some like styles and some pieces they've made so you kind of know what to look for visually when you look for them i am nearly certain basically all of these are new we may have, now that we've done bolos for four plus years, there may be just a few thrown in here that we've covered before. But even if there is, this is going to be new information. This is going to be updated comps. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. still new information. Yes, it This first is. one is my only one on my list that I think could possibly have been covered before. And that is a brand called Cordova. Mm -hmm. So I have actually had Cordova once. And Cordova is a very ski-centric brand. Since they focus mainly on skiing, actually their biggest focus is skiing ski suits. They do make sweaters. They do make hats, gloves, the usual ski stuff, puffer coats, whatever. Mm -hmm. But they really focus and are known for their ski suits. Their big thing is tailored ski wear so that you look beautiful while you ski. They are worn by tons of celebrities and influencers. Like if mm -hmm. you see a ski type like Instagram post from an influencer, they're probably in a Cordy of Cordova, Cordova ski suit. suit. Mariah Carey has worn a lot of Cordova. I know Not that. Not the diva herself. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of the season we're in, Mariah Carey. You. She's going to come after me for doing that. I apologize. Ms. Mariah, leave me alone. They use a lot of different colors, not just like the usual like black, 
dark blue and white that mm-hmm. a lot of like puffer coats use. They use like mint or Tiffany blue or pinks or reds to make it again more like trendy and more modern. They also do more trendy and modern styles. So their ski suits will be like boot cut or flared leg or just a little more funky, maybe some bell sleeves. It just, it brings it to like a modern day and makes it a little more like fashionable. You definitely like sacrifice the practicality Mm. of skiing with a bell sleeve. Well, I feel like that would, do you know how cold you would get going down that mountain going 50 miles an hour with these sleeves? Since they are more like trendy, they are sold at Revolve, but they are also sold at Saks, a website called St. Bernard, Net-A-Porte, and Mm. Outnet. So all kinds of the extra, extra upper scale like net-a-porte is extremely expensive the retail for their ski suits is about a thousand to 1600 so it starts at a thousand that's ridiculous and for their coats down jackets and stuff it's about 800 to 1200 so it's still up there the resale the one thing with them is they hold their resale so well especially the ski suits i feel like because there's not too many pre-loved Cordova suits probably popping up not. on the internet all the time, you know? So the resale value on the ski suits is 750 to 1100 and I have actually had a Cordova ski suit, and it did sell, I think, for 700 or $800. I got it for, like, $80, <laughs> which was great. We love consignment stores that don't know what they're doing. Oh, <laughs> and God the bless. resale for basically every other category except accessories is about 400 to 850 Even their ski pants go for, like, $500. So so expensive. My first one is definitely one that has like come into my consciousness because of Pete Davidson, because he has been like the face of this company for a hot minute. The brand is Moose Knuckles, which is kind of hysterical. They were founded in 1921. They obviously were not called Moose Knuckles back in the day. It was like the family name that I couldn't find on their website. Um, But they have been family owned since then. So this is like some little like Gen Z Zillennial was like, do you know what we need? A company for young people to have like young people coats. And that's how Moose Knuckles got here. <sighs> so the Moose Knuckles name started in 2009 and they were founded by somebody from this family who was speci- like suspiciously and named on the website which was a little weird but they wanted to have this like niche of like younger geared luxury outerwear because a lot of like the Canada Goose the Burberries that's kind of like back in the day may have been seen as a little bit more like old money and we needed yeah but like obviously now I'm put on the Burberry trench and I'm walking out the house like nobody can tell me Canada Goose makes all kinds of absolutely but this was back in 2009 decades and centuries and millennia ago and they have this huge focus which is kind of nice to hear about like ethical sourcing of materials and you know how do these products affect the environment and that kind of thing which is quite nice they're kind of sold everywhere they've had this like really big boom in the past couple of years they moved into like nordstrom and Saks and neiman's and all these other like really crazy expensive like in-person department stores they've also on like net a they're on what's the men's one mr, mr. porte because they do a ton of like men's and women's and children they're very like even i would say in how they market all their like kids and women's and men's and all the other stuff they retail they're very expensive starting at like seven hundred dollars and i think they are one of the companies that goes up depending on the quality of the down in some of their coats so like some of the more like synthetic blend pieces go for like seven it was like 695 to like 725 and then they go all the way up to 1300 which is quite expensive for a coat they resale for about 300 to 600 Hmm. which is nice and you can get them on the real real yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that we recently got one at Mall of America. We did. It took the Doc Martin store, which yeah. kind of makes me sad. Well, like Doc, Doc Martin's Martin. just moved. They just moved, but I like the Doc Martin store. And didn't you say that, like, your students, like, know Moose Oh, Knuckles? my God. So, okay. The kids at school and the cultural grip that Moose Knuckles has on some of these children. Like, when I was a teenager, it was, like, rock revival jeans. And I was also in Iowa. And, like, <laughs> Miss Me jeans were, like, you were the cream of the crop if you were a young girl wearing those, literally. The creamed corn of the crop. <laughs> I'm so glad I moved. And then here, it's Moose Knuckles coats. If you walk into school, if you get on the bus in a Moose Knuckles coat, you immediately get like, you are one of the popular kids. So my next brand is called Pyrenex. And no, it is not Pyrex. It is Pyrenex. Do they make baking wear (laughs) for the everyday American household? No, but the fun thing with Pyrenex (laughs) is they actually do make home things. So... Pyronex was created in 1859, so she's an old brand, and it is a French clothing home brand, so it is a mix of mm. both. They make down coats and very fitting. They make down duvets and down pillows, which is kind of interesting, mm. and it makes a lot of sense. If Canada Goose made, like, down duvets or pillows, like, that would make sense. They sell a mix of heavy, cold-weather coats for, like, the real outdoorsman who's going to Alaska to, like, hike a mountain, and then they also sell some trendier, more just 
kind of like wear it on the streets type puffer jackets. <laughs> For the rest of us. They do make men's, women's, and kids, which is great. And then of course home. And since 2017, they have been focusing on expanding into the US, UK, Japan, other parts of Europe, and Canada. They are sold on Outnet, they're sold on Ukes, and also on Farfetch, and I'm sure a number of other places. The retail for their coats are about 300 to 700 and the resale's about 150 to 550 so still really expensive. <laughs> I mean, puffer coats are always expensive, so. They, I kind of forget how expensive outerwear is. I bought my winter coat pre-loved in the real world. It's yeah. a coach coat, and it retails for, like, too much. an unholy amount of money, and I got it for, like, 100 bucks. I didn't find, or I didn't look up their retail on their duvets. I should have, but oh, I'm sure nice. they're expensive. Good to know, <laughs> in case we ever need one. Okay, so my next brand is the brand that I know for a fact I have at least mentioned on this channel at some point in time before. I think we've worked it into like a men's bolo, maybe. Don't quote me. Anyway, the brand is Obermeyer. I love Obermeyer. They were founded in 1947 by Mr. Klaus Obermeyer, who to this day, he is 102 and he is still alive. Wow. That man be talking. Good for him. He's, you know, talking about skiing and things. He skis Klaus. still. He doesn't do the big hills anymore. He does like kitty hills with his he grandkids, which is adorable. Still? He's 102 and he is going 45 miles an hour down that mountain with his grandbabies. <sighs> wow. Klaus. Klaus Obermeier. Wild. <laughs> um, as you can guess, he is of Nordic descent. I want to say it was like Norway or Sweden. I don't remember the exact name of the town. Klaus Obermeier. Klaus Obermeier. <laughs> he sounds like a frozen extra, which is kind of funny. <laughs> they started as like, he wanted to make ski clothes that were, you know, approachable instead of like, you know, only for like elite ski athletes. He was like, here's your introduction into outdoor sports, which is nice. And he also was like really focused on like making ski wear, like ethical, sustainable, like back in the day, like in the 50s and 60s when he he was kind of just kicking up and then he also has this really weird like patent list he has like 12 to 15 patents that are specific to like outdoor wear and one of them that everybody tries to steal is the like grow with you snow pants and like coats for kids where they have those like little like mitts that you can like on velcro and they like get longer mm. as the kid grows that was mr claus so thank you he definitely wanted to like fill these like weird little niches in terms of like snow wear and you know things being versatile and whatever he is sold at so many places obermeyer is a huge company they are sold at like all kinds of department stores in person they're sold at like specialty ski stores they're sold on their own website i've seen him at like rei before i've seen him at what's the sierra sierra so expensive there they're still very expensive like it's not cheap which is nice they retail for about 200 to 450 which i think for like a down coat is somewhat affordable you know because like you'll have them forever you don't really wear them that much and they resale for about 80 to 400 but i said mine to the real real and they price them quite reasonably so Arbermeyer is one where i think like it has not only been around for a long time but it's it has trusted. been it's been around in the Jeez. u.s for a long time yes. and it's been popular for a long time so compared to the others we've said so far i think you'll find it much more often yeah mm -hmm. and it's very valuable. I would definitely pick it up if it's in like good shape and yeah. you could sell it yourself, but yeah, the real real. The real real still it. prices them. I think I sent in one. It was really cute. It was like a little floral one. They priced it at like 295. Yeah. I was like, oh, thank you. My next brand, another thing I should have looked up is how to pronounce this brand, but I think it is called Rosinol or it is Rosignol. It's R O S S I G N O L. And I will say, so frustrating, but the logo to this brand looks very similar to Montclair. It's the exact same colors. Is it a chicken? And it's a bird. So when you see this, and I assume everyone knows Montclair. Don't get your hopes too high because it's just Rosenol. Rosenol is a French creator of Alpine Snowboard Nordic Equipment. They were founded in 1907 and they were one of the first companies to make plastic skis, which is very interesting. Hmm. They make kids, they make men's, they make women's, and they also make actual like skiing and snowboarding equipment, like the actual boards, oh, the like actual the skis, skis stuff, the yeah. poles, the helmets, the goggles, everything. And this is really interesting too. They have the amount of medals they win at each winter olympics like people who are sponsored by them <laughs> that's so funny or using them but also that's such a flex to be like here's everybody that's won a medal with our products in the past 50 years so in 2022 <laughs> beijing just happened they won 31 medals with their sponsors and with people using their boards which is pretty cool 31 medals yeah. that's crazy i apparently didn't write every place that they're sold because i only have yukes written down and i know that that's not true i'm pretty sure that they're also <laughs> sold yukes, comma <laughs> they're also sold at a lot of the like outdoorsy places because they're slightly 
lower price than some of these other ones too so they're probably also at sierra yeah and maybe like rei and stuff but they're also there are some of their coats that are really expensive so they're also probably mm -hmm. sold at like Saks and everything they retail for about 180 for i think a non-puffer but still a winter jacket up to 750 for the more sport heavy ones and the resale is about 75 to 250 so this is probably the least valuable one but obviously that's nothing to shake a stick at. Like, that's still mm -mm. a good value. I'm not going to turn my nose up $250. Yeah. Absolutely not. Okay, my next one is one that I know we have mentioned, but it has never been in a bow lore. A bow lore. Oh, I haven't said that in so long. So far. Okay, so it is <laughs> Matt Cage. Matt Cage. And it's English, which is fine. Are you going to be okay? No. Because now that we transition into the English ones, like, it, it Something's will, reborn. Something is you. changing. Something is shifting. So it was founded in 1999. 1999. <laughs> by, okay, I do not remember how to pronounce this man's first name, but his last name is Alfassi. Mackage is only from 1999? 1999. Keep that name in your mouth. What? In your head, not in your mouth. Alfassi. I'm older than Mackage? That. That's yes. weird. And he... Mr. Alfassi wanted to create this company that has these like alpine influences, but also like the quality and the tailoring that we have come to know and love from the people apparently in England that love to design coats. There will be many more, so keep that in the back of your head. Tons of environmental like research. He's done like science in terms of like how if I make this coat, will that impact the ozone layer in 20 years, which is comforting to know. But he has won many awards in terms of like design and sustainability. So that is like definitely where this company is is apparently going. They are very, very, very like keen to get into other markets, kind of like Jack was talking about with like not Pyrex, but like Pyronex. Pyronex, yeah. They are trying to get back into like the US market, which they've been in here for a little bit, but I don't think like too many people know about Mackage in the US. It's really popular in Europe. They're trying to get into Brazil. It was a very big emphasis on the website. And from my knowledge of the country of Brazil, it is not that cold. But either way, they are sold kind of all over the place in the US now. They, like Moose Knuckles, have had this like very big resurgence due to like influencer culture. They have an affiliate program in England that I think is like very slowly trickling over to the US influencers. Sold at like Nordstrom, Saks, Neiman's, all the department stores, Mr. Porte. They love to do a men's coat. They love to do a kid's coat. So they're like, in the children's designer section of Nordstrom, which I think is adorable. They are very expensive. They start at about 700 bucks and they go, the ones on the website like teetered around a thousand, but in the stores, apparently from what I was reading, you can go and like kind of custom build your coat. Like when we talked about Mr. and Mrs. Italy all those years ago, you can like, I want this coat and this color and this fabric and da 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 da. And those can be like thousands and thousands of dollars. They resale for about 400 to a thousand. I, if I found one, would probably send it into the real world, to be completely honest. They had some very well priced. Coats I've had like website. I've had like two of them at least and I send them to the real real mm -hmm. Mackage has been around a while too so you can well I guess not as long as I thought but you can find some that are like early 2000s and those don't do like as well but they're still very valuable yes also I would say with Mackage is there compared to these other brands more I feel like they use more wools not just yeah. puffer like it's, it's more of an even like wool coats and puffers yeah kind of. so the one thing that, like, I got confused about was there has been, like, a Mackage coat company that was, like, found in the 1800s. That company went bankrupt, and then he took it over in, in 1999. Okay. So, it, like, it started in, like, 18-something, something, something, something. So, something, there something, are something, probably something. some old So, it's, it's the same company, but it's, like, not. Nah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Same name. Yeah. Same name. It's like how there's like the vintage Sandro and then like modern Sandro. Yeah. That's like beautiful. So my next brand is the most expensive on this list of either of our lists by far, okay. but probably my least favorite. And I will explain why in a second. So this brand is called Gorski, G-O-R-S-K-I. And they have made men's and women's coats since 1984. So they're older as well. We love an 80s company. Sustainability is a apparently at their forefront and ethical materials are something they really really believe in. They collaborate with all kinds of animal welfare advocates and their coats are meant to last for years and years and years which makes sense because they're very 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 expensive. You might be wondering why I'm only talking about like the animal welfare and the ethics and everything because this company is a fur company. And I didn't know that fur companies even existed anymore, really. Fendi. Mm. Fendi is, like, the only one that I can think of. They do make puffers. Like, I think they maybe make a few with no fur or maybe just the hood trimmed fur, which I know brands still do fur-trimmed hoods. But this company still makes, like, 
fur coat fur coats, which is an interesting choice in my opinion, and I don't really know how you can collaborate with animal welfare groups and have them be like, you get an okay from us. I don't know about that. So they use mink, fox, chinchilla, oh, and all the like, the all the like usual They're furs. So these are sold at Neiman Marcus, Saks, Bergdorf, and all those really expensive places. And because they are fur coats, the lowest, which is more the puffers with maybe a <laughs> fur-trimmed hood, is a thousand. It's so expensive. And a shin length, I don't know what kind of fur, fur coat, is $25,000. That's a down payment on a house. That is. That's insane. That is a car. So, the reason that I really want to talk about this one mm -hmm. is not because I support going maybe to buy like a new one from them. Maybe let's not do that. No. But if you find these, obviously they are worth a ton of money. And in the bins, if you saw one of these, I just think that it's better to save this material that was already used from mm -hmm. going completely to waste and yeah. maybe try to give it a longer life. Give, give it, it a an second life, life, you know? Like, yeah. So the resale on them is about 200 to 3,000. Obviously, I didn't find comps on the $25,000 coat. I feel like those are the ones. I found mean. some regular length fur ones that were like $3,000 on Posh. $200 once again was just like kind of the regular puffers. Take all of that as you will. I just think it might be better to save it if you see it in the bins That's versus crazy. letting it go completely to waste. $25,000. Well, we, we will conclude that one because that's not my favorite. Close brand. the book on the fur <laughs> chapter. Okay, my next brand, this was actually really fun to watch and I watched a little video about this woman that founded this company. The brand is Skahoop. Which, you know what? <laughs> I just recently if found If I Skahoop. was like a yogurt shop owner or like a coffee store, we Basketball be... court and scooping ice cream. Skahoops. You could have like fro okay, well, yo on and that basketball note, hoop. I'm retiring from teaching. I'm quitting reselling. I'm delving everything I have a into, basketball my, themed fro -yo into shop. my sporting goods slash frozen yogurt yes. stand. Skahoops. Anyway, okay. It was founded in Sweden in 1999 by Miss Sissy Skahoop. I have no Sissy idea. Sissy Skahoop. I do not know how to pronounce her last name. It was very Northern European and had two vowels. That name. So that is unfortunately out of my syntax. Sissy but Sissy Skahoop. Her name is not Sissy Skahoop. That's just what I'm calling her. Her name's <laughs> Sissy and then it was like a K. Sissy Skahoop. So much more fun to say. Okay. <clears throat> um, She founded this company because her butt got cold. She was taking her dog out for a walk. The dog's name is, it's an A with a little circle on top of it and some other letters. And she was like, hmm, my butt's freezing. Why don't I just make something to keep my little patootie warm when I'm out walking the dog in the morning? And lo and behold, she invented a skirt that was like made out of a down coat and Skahoops was born. Now, she has since like migrated away from her initial puffer skirt, which is still extremely popular. If you're going to find anything from this brand, you will probably find her skirt, but her coats are kind of now where she's like, oh, she's taken off. They are made in small batches, so they definitely do not have like a ton of production. They don't have a ton of them made. The costs keep low because everything is like done in these like teeny little like very, very, very sustainable Swedish factories. Like all the materials, like she knows the farmers where like the down is from. She like walks up the road and like talks to these people. It's super sweet. She definitely is not a huge company and I don't think she ever intends of getting any bigger. She's really only sold at like specific boutiques that she gets like specific licensing to sell to because of their like sustainable practices. She does not want to sell to anybody that will like, you know, turn her products into any kind of like fast fashion, which is super nice. So she's really kind of hard to find. Her own website is the primary source where you will find hers. She's really only at like REI every now and again and those kind of like higher priced, more niche like sporting goods stores. Um, she retails 220 to 350, which I think is very affordable for a nice sustainable down coat. Resale 80 to 200. I had one one time and it sold for like 150 bucks in Macari, I've which had, was quite nice. I've had two and this week I just found another. And also, side note, it might be pronounced scoop, honestly, but we just like to say scoop. scoop is so much more fun. Yeah, to say. it's spelled like scoop. Let so me that's call why it we scoop. Say that. Um, but I just found one recently. But the two times I've had it before, it was a down skirt, yes. and they do very well, and they sell for a good amount, like people love eighty them. to a hundred dollars. People love them because yes. they're walking their dogs. And I also will warm. say I have <laughs> never really seen someone like steal this idea, which good for scoop. Good for I think she locked that down. Probably. Wick. Because I've never seen so another brand funny. do it. Which is I really didn't see anything about patents, but like I cannot imagine the little like very nice, well mannered, but also like painfully just <laughs> like Swedish legal team, Miss Sissy Skohoop called and was like, I have an idea for the puffer skirt. I have an idea for the 
their lawsuit. And they were like, if anybody makes it, we will dunk them in the Nordic water. <laughs> I will send my dog after you she and goes, his little puffer skirt. My dog Adelaide's gonna rip your face off <laughs> if you steal my skirt idea. So my final brand for today is called Airno or Hairno, but I'm sure it's Airno. H-E-R-N-O. And they are very, 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 very inspired by water. Every sentence on their website talked about water, rivers, lakes, rain, snow. What was that Perks company where like everything revolved around like the vibe? <sighs> Very fitting with water. They started by making a raincoat in 1948 and it was actually a men's raincoat, which again, I feel like hmm. for a lot of our clothing brands, either they don't make men's or they're just starting to make men's. They definitely men's usually don't start after. with men's. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. It's been passed down from the father who founded it to his son, who is still, I think, the reigning like president of the company. 1948. Yeah. Their down is sourced from two specific locations in separate countries and both both of these places collect the down just for them. So it's a very, oh. very... Um, that is a closed circle production. Yeah, That's a very, nice. like... Sustainable. <laughs> like they're That's connected, a good business Very intertwined, like, very linked together. They focus on very low energy consumption with their factories. That's kind of their main sustainable thing that they like to do is, Perfect. like, not kill the ozone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Thank you. They're sold on Mukes, Saks, they're at Nordstrom, all the places we've been listing this whole time. The retail for their coats are about 450 to 1300 and the resale's about 300 to 600. I would say, once again, they're kind of that mix of utilitarian with some trendy pieces. Like, they do touch both places, but they don't, like, focus on one over the other. I've never heard of Hero Now before. And so, you learn know. something new every day. Okay, yeah. my but last But just remember one. water... Rain, water, rivers, and lakes. I just have the like intro to that last Airbender playing in my head. Earth, water, fire, and air. I didn't watch that show. Oh, I loved the last one. My last one is one that we definitely have talked about before. We have found it in the bins. We found it in the thrift stores. Some of you have probably found it. So this one, if I had to put money, you would probably find something from this company. And the company is Soy and Kayo. So okay, remember when I said keep Mr. Elfasti? In the back of your head, I don't remember his first name. His brother was the one that founded this company. So for some reason, this family's niche. This family's very cold. Instead of like some <laughs> families being like, my mom's a teacher and so am I. My mom isn't a teacher, she's an accountant. This family was like, we're going to make coats. <laughs> My brother makes down coats and so will I. Awesome. So Mr. Ilhan Alfasi started a leather company like back in the, I want to say like mid to late 90s and was like, nah. He went to like wools and like tailoring and he really fell in love with like high quality materials, but also this like not sacrificing it just because of the season. He definitely has this massive, massive, massive focus on like the longevity of a garment. And just because you buy a puffer coat in June, it doesn't mean that you can only wear it during like, you know, your few months, which is, I would wear a puffer coat. Um, I think that's more for his, like, his wool pieces and, like, the things that aren't meant to specifically keep you warm. That, like, you know, you can wear a wool cotton sweater in the summer if you, like, layer it properly. Or, I don't know, do whatever. But they, like, collaborate all the time. They bounce ideas off of each other. They have a weekly brunch where they show each other their little, like, ideas they're working on, which I think is the cutest cool. thing ever. I think it's adorable. It was founded in 2004 in England. Because for some reason, every other wool company starts in England, which is crazy. They are sold everywhere, literally everywhere. TJ Maxx, REI, high-end department stores. Cheap. It's still not, a, it is not inexpensive. So when I say like TJ Maxx, I'm talking like, it's purple tag at TJ Maxx and like the wool shawls that we all tend to find are still gonna be like $130. Yeah. Pretty expensive still, but very obtainable. Their coats in particular sell for about $5.45 to $7.45. Pretty like specifically. And I think that is just like based off of the quality of the down and like the length of the coat and that kind of thing. And they resale for about 100 to 200 If I found like a coat coat, I would probably send it into the real world. I have. To be completely honest. I have had this brand many times as well. And I sent it into the And once again, it's slightly older, I guess. Mm -hmm. Again, again, not as old as I thought it was. I would have had no idea to this. There before. are older labels and newer labels of it. And mm -hmm. kind of as usual, like the older labels don't have as much value anymore. But yeah. the newer ones definitely That's have That's just more. generally speaking for like resale. Older things may not garner as much money as the newer things. And have they yeah. possibly had one thing in a FabFitFun? Was there like a poncho They had. Maybe. It was not a poncho. It was a scarf. Maybe. The poncho went on sale. Okay. They had like this crazy big blowout sale where they like, it was kind of like a Bombas situation. They were like, if you buy something, we'll donate something to somebody in need. Mm -hmm. And everybody bought them and everybody donated them, which I think kind of defeats the purpose of the charity, but whatever. Either way. And oh, that was fun. That is all that we have for you guys today for winter bolos. But 
Like I said, we do have eight more winter bolo brands that we are gonna share with the Valentines tomorrow on Wednesday. So if you're a Valentine, we will see you tomorrow. Or if you'd like to become a Valentine, I believe the like join member button is literally right here. Three dollars a month. And then you can see us again. You get two extra videos. On Who month. wants to do that? <laughs> But we will see the Valentines tomorrow. And then we will see, I will see you all on Thursday with Debbie and uh, a little bit of Evan as birthday. well. And then Ryan will be back on Saturday. Yes, I absolutely will. For what's on Saturday. So thank you for watching. Let us know if you learned any of these or if you like knew them all and you're like, okay, stop talking. Or <gasps> let us know if there's Hopefully other- not the last one. Let us know if there's other Bolo winter brands that you think we should cover. Yes. Let us know. And we will see you guys when we see ya. Goodbye. Bye.